sit down on an average Wednesday night and watch college baseball right. and learn about all these players, and that's the big problem. Or high school baseball, you don't see that on TV, or you're not going to your local baseball field to see these kids. So that's what makes it so tough. But if, if trades are available, maybe it would be more interesting to me. Not so much, but I'm only one man, so that's my opinion. Yeah, but you're 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 you're, you're, you're basically the standing of two men, so I give you two votes there, uh, Evan. Thank and you. by the way. I just looked it up. Here's a great trivia question, Stoney. Don't look it up. I'm not. Uh, uh, the number one overall pick in the baseball draft uh, from the year 2000 until, we'll say, 2010. Three of those men have played for the Detroit Tigers. Can you name them? Um, well, I know, obviously, um, Justin Upton. Justin Upton is correct. That's one. Good one. So, well, from what year did you say? We'll say from 2000 to 2010, a 10 year span. And I'll give you just some perspective. In 2000, the first overall pick was Adrian Gonzalez. And in 2010, the first overall pick was Bryce Harper. So between Gonzalez and Harper, three guys were taken number one overall who ended up playing. Ooh, I, got one. I got one. I got one. Go ahead. Delman Young. Bang, bang, bang. There's two. Nice. Ooh, ooh, I got another one. I got another one. I don't remember uh, he, if he was first or second. He looked David him up. Price. David Price. David yeah, Price. Exactly. Very good. Wow. It's amazing. The first overall pick seems to make it hit more often than it misses, at least more recently. Like, in the past, you'd be like, I never heard of that guy. He was a total. Carlos Correa, Garrett Cole. Steven Strasburg. I mean, a lot of these guys have worked out. Right, there haven't been very many Matt Andersons there. Uh, there have well, not there's not been as been many Matt Andersons. Matt Bush, who's taken a pick from before Justin Verlander. Correct. Yeah, Matt Bush didn't work out all that well. Oh, poor guy. Um, so we also have a good story that I thought was amazing. It's ranking the 10 most dominant video game athletes of all time. And Tech Mobile. And that's your final answer because that is number one. But it, it, I don't know that many other ones. Well, Tech Bobo was Mike Tyson, right? Well, Mike Tyson was never a playable character in that oh, game, so it's kind of iffy, but he is a dominant character because it was very, very tough to beat him. Um, but yeah. there's the likes of Scotty Pippen in NBA Jam because, you know, Michael Jordan was never in NBA Jam, which always sucked. But then, this is my favorite, Jamie, and, and you'll like this, is John Dowd. Do you know who John Dowd is? John Dowd? Oh, John. He rose to the Tony? No, 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 no. I want to say the game was called Hardball. It's no, wait. Uh, it's MV, MVP Baseball. MVP called. Baseball. Okay. And John Dowd is Barry Bonds. Because Barry Bonds was never allowed his likeness in the video game. So John oh, Dowd okay. was the guy that replaced him. And yeah. John Dowd in MVP Baseball was unbelievable. So you also have, you know, Steph Curry in NBA 2K. You have Reggie Bush in NCAA football. So go check out that list. I think it's really it's really cool for anybody that likes to play video games and to see the most dominant athletes that ever graced your PlayStation 3 or your Xbox. So or Nintendo or Sega or Dreamcast, whatever the video game system may have been. So Stoney, yeah, you probably know this by now, but my son Josh, who's 14, has been owning Evan in NBA 2K. You beat him and, once, uh, right? Uh, three times. Uh, oh, three times. really? This I did not know. Yeah, but uh, I'm not totally sure that uh, if, they, if proper drug testing were in place, that uh, all the competitors would have been completely, uh, um, you know, in, within their normal limits. But uh, um, <laughs> Pete, Pete Maravich, Pete Maravich is unbelievable in that game. He does admit, and I feel like Josh has a cheat code, but I digress. Yeah, okay. One final story that I want to leave you guys with is Steph Curry is so impressive. His name is, I'm going to probably butcher it, but it's Shang Tsung, okay? So he is a young man that Steph Curry found on the internet. And why he is so impressed by him is because this young man only has one arm. And when you see him dribble the basketball, you will think that he's either A, on the hand one mixtape tour, or he should be going to college to play. Because you'll watch him play with only one arm and dribble, and the moves that he can pull off is unbelievable. And after watching the video, I see why Steph Curry was so, so impressed. He reached out, tried to find the young man. The young man reached back to him, and he just said, hey, you're an inspiration, and we don't take no for an answer. We found a way to overcome and get
get there. Get out there on the basketball court and show people just how much the game means to you. And it is very inspiring to see what this kid does on the basketball court with only one arm. It's unbelievable. You have to watch this video. I have not heard anything about that. Check it out. So that's all at 971 theticketcom That's what you missed with Jamie and Stoney. There's also some hot uh, Holly Saunders. Yeah, that's, that's for Stoney. We ran out of time. Go check that out. Yeah. And um, make sure you follow us about the Major League Draft. And also, don't forget about Thursday when we'll have rounds two through five as well. Awesome. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it, buddy. Talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Have fun. Thanks, Dad. There he is, the man, Evan Jenkins. And uh, he covers everything you need to know. On 971theticket.com. When big things happen in Detroit sports, you hear it first on Detroit's number one sports station, 971 The Ticket. Breaking news powered by Radio.com Sports and brought to you by the Dell Technology Small Business Conference. Go listen at radio.com forward slash Dell. continued last night for Major League Baseball and its Players Union as union officials submitted a new proposal that calls for an 89-game season that would begin on July 10th, an expanded playoff deal, and for the players to be paid full prorated salaries for the season. It's expected league officials will reject this proposal, which the MLB Network's Ken Rosenthal says just illustrates what's wrong with baseball. There are a few other things going on here in the country, and in this particular environment at this time, to have this squad would have hoped there would have been some thought of the bigger picture and yet it seems like these two sides cannot get out of their own way that clip comes courtesy of nbc sports baseball will be in the spotlight for all of the right reasons tonight as the first round of the 2020 draft will take place in new jersey the tigers have the number one overall pick this evening and they're expected to select arizona state first baseman spencer torkelson According to a story posted last night by ESPN, officials at USC are expected to end their disassociation with former Lion running back Reggie Bush later this year. School officials took that step against Bush back in 2010 when it was determined that he illegally received cash and a home for his family in exchange for going to USC, which landed the Trojan program on a two-year probation and also saw USC forced to give up its 2004 national championship title. Roger Federer will miss the rest of the 2020 tennis season after he confirms on Twitter yesterday he had a setback in his attempt to recover from surgery on his right knee. The 38-year-old Federer had that procedure on his right knee back in February. At the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Tony Ortiz. For more, stay tuned to 97.1 The Ticket and Radio Back. Good morning, everybody, and welcome into our little show. Uh, Jamie and Stoney and Heather, 248-539-9797 is the telephone number. I can see Stoney. I can see Heather. I know I can hear Stoney. I don't know yet if I can hear Heather. You can. can Hi, Jamie. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you this morning? we, We had some weird technical issues earlier this morning. I couldn't get on when I first tried to get on as well. And uh, I thought maybe, just maybe, we had some uh, effect of the weather, which uh, I don't I don't know if I had any storms overnight or not. If I did, I slept right through them. But uh, I know that my power went out briefly last night at about 8 o'clock for, like, literally two seconds. Did your power go out last night? No. no. Stony? No. Tonight might be a different story. Yeah, the storms are expected to be really bad tonight and yeah. uh, this afternoon. We'll see what happens there. It was funny because uh, I was, uh, my whole family was sitting around and the power went out and it was like, oh, but then it came right back on. I mean, literally it was out for like three seconds and then everyone's like, yay, yay. And I was in my back of my head going, oh, if the power had stayed out, I would have had the day off from work. Yeah, I think uh, Dearborn. That would have been the worst thing in the world. Dearborn uh, had some power issues. I think three three or 4,000 people were without power. I, I heard uh, driving in this morning. Yeah. So we'll see what happens tonight because there are actually this evening they say what between four and ten o'clock it's going to be really horrible. Is that what they, I mean? Is that they're really saying it? I know you're exaggerating slightly, but I mean, 
There's always the potential, but are they saying it's going to for sure hit us at some point? Is that definitely a feeling? That's the feeling. But, yeah. you know, sometimes different Mother Nature works in strange ways, and the next thing you know, we're not going to get it. Yeah. That's, exactly. what, they're, that's so, what they're saying, James. That's what they're saying. If, if it were, and I'm not saying it is, because we know this has already been pushed off, but if the fireworks were planned for this evening, they probably would postpone them. They're always very shrewd about that. They always smartly canceled them way in advance of what we thought was uh, going to be a potential weather situation. That is true. And also, if there was a Tiger game tonight, they wouldn't cancel to the last minute to make sure people got down there, got their beers and stuff. True, and also celebrated the uh, arrival of Mr. Torkelson or uh, Martin. That's right. right. Exactly. It's a big night in Tiger history tonight. Damn right. And, uh, as Heather mentioned last night, uh, if you're a huge Tiger fan, you can take part in all the festivities starting at what time? Six o'clock, Heather? Six o'clock. Yep. Tigers.com, yes. Tigers YouTube, uh, Tigers, you know, Facebook in, as well. Yes. You can watch. Um, there's a special draft special going on. All right. And so then the draft starts at 7, if I'm not mistaken. And I, you know, it's so funny because we sit here and we know the NFL draft inside and out. We used to know the NBA draft inside and out. Um, the Major League Baseball draft, I I couldn't even tell you, Stoney, if this is the first year they've done it in prime time or this is like the fourth year they've done it in prime time. I know that MLB Network has televised it for the last few years. I want to say this is the first time that ESPN is jumping on board because... Quite honestly, normally they'd be showing probably NBA playoff games or something like that. Or I guess we'd be in the NBA Finals right now, wouldn't we? But whatever. Yes, you're, um, you're, you're correct. And yes, yeah. um, the question is, and I probably know the answer due to you know, social distancing. In the past, some of the known the first round picks were in New York or wherever, they, in, wherever yeah. their studio is. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Right. But who knows? Maybe they are. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, I don't think most Tiger fans remember where they were when they drafted Justin Verlander, but this has the potential to be every bit as big of a draft pick for them, if whoever it is, and it really is, it's, it's, I, I don't want to say it's a, it's a giant decision for Al Avila, because it sounds like both of these guys are going to hit, but we talked about it yesterday a little bit, you go back over the first overall pick in the draft, and there are misses along the way, particularly when you go after a, a high school kid, because you don't know quite yet what kind of a young man he's going to turn out to be. Will he deal with some issues like Josh Hamilton dealt with, like Matt Bush dealt with, or is he going to be just a perfect citizen like Mike Trout has been since he was drafted by the Angels? I guess the good news for the Tigers, if you want to call it that, is that both these guys, Martin and Torkelson, are college kids, so they at least have a little bit more seasoning as uh, they come into the draft tonight. And all indications when you're reading, they are pretty good kids. Uh, Martin is being compared to the competitive level of Michael Jordan. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that means he's going to go on a boat and get a 470, uh, 440 foot, 442, <laughs> a huge ass fish, a big there. fish. Yeah, yeah. 442 pound Marlin Jordan's team caught yesterday. But uh, That's right. yeah, That's right. you know, it, it, it's kind of cool in a way because. There's nothing going on, which isn't good, but the fact that, you know, baseball finally has its spotlight, draft, everybody, well, never mind. a lot of people will be watching, especially around here. The, the way to, to make the draft even better is in the first 10 minutes, the preamble, whatever, you know, they explain the rules and all that stuff, that Rob Manfred says, yes, uh, I want you to introduce uh, Tony Clark, and I think they, they shake their hands, and we're going to have a season. That would be unbelievable, but that ain't happening, I don't think. You know, there was a proposal Tony mentioned. The players came back with 89 games. That number, but then it is expected to be returned. Yes, but doesn't it seem like at least they're heading in the right direction here, Tony? I mean, I don't know. I, I remain cautiously, very cautiously optimistic that they are going to find a way to get a deal. And I think the fact that the players came back with 89 games is at least a step in the positive direction. But you're right, they still need to, to come down more and find a, 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 a number they can all agree upon. But I, I don't know. I, I don't see it going to an arbitrator or anything like that. I think ultimately they'll settle something here. But it just seems like they're getting closer and closer. So, yes, that would be the good case scenario. The, be, the better case scenario would be that uh, Rob Manfred stands up there and says, 
I've decided to give the Tigers the first two picks in the draft. <laughs> well, what's interesting is if for some reason they don't play a season tomorrow, the Tigers might get the number one pick next year. Yeah, yeah. They haven't talked about that, have they? No, no, I don't know what they would do. I, mean, I don't think they go through a lottery system, right? I mean, they've, or maybe they've got a few teams instead of that, you know, yeah. happy big do something like that with that, the worst five Tigers. Rather than the Are you, Tigers, but we would pick again. Do you think it's at all more exciting this year? And maybe it's not more exciting. Maybe the fans right now are listening to us going, this is, uh, I couldn't care less about the baseball draft. But the reason why I was thinking about it is because, number one, the Tigers have not drafted a hitter who has made an impact in the major leagues in quite a long time. Okay, that's one. And, and when they have, it hasn't necessarily been a top flight pick. It's been a guy who's developed. Like you mentioned yesterday, you remember when Cameron Mapin was picked. Right. Okay. I don't remember either Granderson or Castellanos getting picked. Well, no, but obviously you rem- it's, it's interesting because Castellanos, I wrote that down because I remember they didn't have any regular first round pick, so he was their first pick in whatever, compensatory or whatever. Oh, and, yeah. And yeah. people were very high on him because the reason he even lasted that long was because nobody else would sign him or, you know, so Castellanos yeah. had a little bit of a slight buzz to him as far as with baseball okay. people. And, uh, uh, but obviously when you're at the top of the draft and you're focusing in on hitters, these two guys are going to get a bulk of the attention. And the other thing too is when you read about them, I mean, Torkelson could be on the big club as soon as 2022. Well, yeah, but here's the other thing. With the way this season's going to be, who the hell knows? There's no minor leagues. There's an outside chance. Torkelson and, of course, you know, Mize and Scooble and Manning, they could be on the roster sometime during this, you know, shortened season as well. And the other yeah. reason, and don't discount this, Jamie, that people might be more excited than ever by the Tigers not having number one draft choice, is the name factor. It's Spencer Torkelson. It's Tork. I know. I mean, people are kind of, you know, it's a kind of a cool name. And if they take, uh, you know, Austin Martin, it's a name close to a James Bond card. Yeah. The Torkelson thing, as you know, because we've talked about this since his, his name first emerged, I, I'm a little dubious about it only because he does not sound like a great sports star. I feel like the great sports stars have names that fit their standing. Don't you? Yeah. You know, I, I, there's not too many great Spencer Torkelson type names. Now, Spencer do. Torkelson sounds like an offensive lineman from Wisconsin. <laughs> you know, I see, to me, he sounds like... A guy who is, you know, a, a, a prime member of the of the uh, like decathletes or the not, or the academic decathletes. Decathlon, <laughs> what do they call it? Like, he kind of sounds like a nerdy kid in your chess club as opposed to a power hitting first baseman. Yeah, I don't see, know why he just kind of does. He grew up like thirty miles from it. Well, in that case, uh, out of power in game. Did you uh, you know where Petaluma, California is? Petaluma, California. Petaluma, California. I went on a uh, field trip there in the fourth grade. You probably remember that story. Oh, I was the escort. The Petaluma Adobe. All right, uh, it is 6 13. Uh, we have Wojo coming up today. Wednesday is with Wojo. Stoney has attained for us a mystery guest at uh, 7 30, right? Or 8 30. Yeah, 7 30. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who it is. I know you don't. Yeah. But you know. We're going to play. Oh, I, I know. I hope I have good questions ready for you. <laughs> no, you probably don't. But you I don't. You probably won't, because you don't know who it is. How do you have good questions ready for Well, I, I would hate for him to have him come on and go, I got nothing to ask this guy. Stony, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have a few things to ask. Okay, good. Uh, but we have news with Heather coming up next. What's up, Heather? Um, guys, I've got a Florida man story. Um, oh. This guy really wanted to be a cool father, so he said, but he ended up in jail. That's definitely a Florida man story. Yes. That's coming up next on 97 One The Ticket. 97 One The Ticket. Traffic. From the Deadly Deadly J AM 950 Traffic Center, this report brought to you by Flame Heating and Cooling. It's still accident free around Metro Detroit this morning, but coming up in about an hour or so, prepare for double lane closures as construction is scheduled for a 59 westbound. You'll find that anywhere between University Drive and the Woodward Loop until 9 o'clock tonight. I'm Michelle Penny with traffic. Businesses are starting to bounce back. 
But what if you could do better than that? What if you could adapt, deliver, and succeed in new ways with new customers? At Comcast Business, we're committed to helping you not just bounce back, but bounce forward with one of our best offers ever. Get a powerful and reliable internet and voice solution for only $29.95 a month for three months with a two-year agreement. It'll help you stay ahead with a network you can count on. Stay connected with 24-7 support and thrive. Flexible solutions that work wherever you are. Call 1-800-501-6000 or go online today to find out more. Plus, ask about other offers to get a prepaid card worth up to $500. Comcast Business. Offer in 622-2020. Restrictions apply. Limited to new Comcast Business 75 megabits internet and one voice mobility line customers. Early termination fee applies. After three months, enrollment and eco bill and auto pay required. Equipment, installation taxes, and fees extra. Subject to change. If your air conditioner sounds like your baby endlessly screaming in the middle of the night, don't hesitate. Call the experts at Flame. Best Flame Heating and Cooling. Go online now to flamefurnace.com or call 888-234-2340. That's 888-234-2340. Around the hiding go seek helps a family find joy. A real family race reminds us that moving forward takes teamwork. Play holds us through. At Project Play Southeast Michigan, we believe...
The destination is on your right. 18811 Prospect Street. Can you believe we're together? This is crazy. Arrived. And then we left, and it was like we didn't actually sit there and talk with each other. We're so busy.